Okay, great. Thank you so much, Ram and uh, Eric. And we also have Will on the line to help out with the workshop. So really appreciate. Welcome to get started with Istio Service Mesh. A uh, quick introduction about me. I been working on Istio for a long time, four plus years. And recently I joined Solo. So um, I'm the director of open source with Solo. I wrote a book about Istio Explained. Uh, which actually have a lot of similarity as the workshop we're going through today. Um, a little bit about our company, uh, Solo.io. We were founded in 2017 in Boston area. We have really, what's attract me to Solo is tremendous uh, growth of the company and the clear vision uh, laid by our leadership team. So very amazing growth. Uh, we actually just had a new uh, funding round. So we're very well funded. And we also play, um, we are outperformer on the recent uh, GigOM uh, report for Service Mesh. As far as the product we're offering, we offer Glue Mesh, uh, which is the enhanced Istio service mesh, uh, bring enterprise Istio easy for you to consume, uh, a role-based uh, service mesh model. We also have uh, an API gateway uh, built on top of Envoy, uh, Glue Edge. Our company is uh, building on open source and with value added for our users. We provide long term support uh, for Istio and Envoy through our Glue products. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about Istio Foundation Badge. Uh, this is a badge we've been handing out to many of our students who gone through the Istio Get Started workshop. And the tests will be sent out towards the end of the workshop. Uh, we do require 80% of passing on the test. So if you've gone through the workshop today and you like the workshop, you want to try out the test, and if you pass the test, we will send you a badge like this one. Uh, it's an electronic badge, and you will get it uh, in a few weeks. Let's start talk about the common adoption patterns for Istio. Um, in our lab one, we're going to teach you about installing Istio, uh, which we won't have time given the length of the lab. But lab two, uh, we will be able to experience is about how do you adopt Istio just for the Istio ingress gateway? And that's the most common scenario for user to adopt to Istio. Lab three, we're going to talk about by adding the sidecar to your services in the mesh, you immediately gain observabilities into each of your services running in the mesh. And lab four, we're going to talk about how do you secure that communication through mutual TLS um, by the sidecar provided of, of Istio for you automatically with a simple policy that you apply. And then we're going to do deeper into understanding how that works within Istio. Lab five, we're going to teach you how do you control traffic when you have more than one version of your services? How do you do uh, canary rollout? How do you do uh, dark launching? So we're going to teach you all that. Uh, with that, I would love to, you know, get you get started with the lab environment. Uh, Will, if you have the link, can you send out the invites to everybody on the chat platform? So I would love you guys to go through the link that Will is going to send out and start to um, get ready for the environment. So I would like you guys to um, Go to the link, which will get you access to this uh, link you are seeing. And I want you to, by the way, if you need to log in, you should be able to log in with your Google ID, I think Twitter and uh, GitHub ID. So one of these ID will get you login. And then once you get logged in, I want you to click on skip to on the second lab, Istio Ingress Gateway. So exactly what I'm doing now. So I want you to skip to that lab because it's two minutes waiting, which is why I want you to get started. Uh, okay. 
So the environment um, is provided by Instructor. So essentially we pay for this company to provide um, a VM for us in a cloud that's closer to you. And then we're going to install Kubernetes onto that VM automatically for you. And the first lab is going to install Istio for you. Since we're skipping the first lab, um, hey, you hey, Lynn, will just automatically a... get to the second lab. Lynn, can Go you ahead. hear me? Yes. Uh, can we just give everybody a minute to make sure that everyone has access to the instruct link? Yeah, so I saw the link. I sent it out Sorry. to the Zoom, uh, Ram. Yeah, you there's know no Zoom to... link, but um, if you go to the event on like the actual CNCF uh, page, then there should be a, the same place where you, you're watching the event like virtually. That's a good place to get the link. Yep. It's also in the Service Mesh Con Slack channel, if you've got access to that. Oh, thank you. That's a good one, too. Uh, let's give everybody a, a couple minutes to make sure they get the link. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to talk as you're getting the links, okay. um, because the, the key is that, you know, once you get the link, you hit this button to skip to the second lab. and. Uh, and we want you to get familiar with the environment. So a couple of tips working with the link is uh, don't refresh the browser if you don't need to, because the, the, there is actually a refresh button um, provided by Instruct. So use that refresh button first um, before you need to refresh the browser, because of the fact that you refresh the browser could reset your contacts and uh, you know could bring uh, interesting behavior that you may not want to see. Uh, you may see different tabs for each lab. So that's intended because each lab is very instructed where we want you to follow certain steps. So you may have access to Grafana lab, uh, tab, but not in the other lab. So that's normal. Um, you can always click on the check button at the end of each lab just to see, you know, how you're doing. Uh, that's re highly recommended. Just making sure you've done all the steps we recommended for you. Um, so the lab one, we're going to skip, um, but essentially I, want to, I can quickly talk to you. It, what essentially does is does a pre-check command to check if your Kubernetes cluster is good, and it's going to teach you install Istio using Istio Cuddle. It's going to um, teach you how to see different profiles on your system that's available for you to install. And uh, um, so it's a really simple one. Um, and then does anyone, anyone have environment? I wish we can run a survey like quickly to see how many of you have access and gets the environment ready. It looks like mine is still trying to skip, so. Just to note that some folks are having to refresh the page to get to that uh, Istio workshop. Okay, so yeah, so we'll definitely wait a little bit here um, because <laughs> I also need an environment too. Um, but, um, but the lab we're going to do together is lab two. Uh, so this lab is teaching you about adopter Istio by Istio Ingress Gateway. Uh, so you're going to deploy a couple of sample services and uh, notice we're not going to put sidecar um, for these services uh, in this lab. And then you're going to config one of the services uh, to expose to the Istio ingress gateway. And we're going to configure it to expose on HTTP first, then we're going to expose it on HTTPS. So a couple of Istio network resource uh, you're going to uh, learn through this lab is a uh, gateway resource, which essentially allows you to config edge load balancer information, such as the port number, you know, the protocol on the gateway, um, whether you are using terminate or pass through, whether you are using, uh, what is your like a TLS, uh, certs and uh, keys. Uh, so that's all config in the gateway resource. Um, the second resource you are going to learn is the virtual service resource. 
it essentially con contains the list of routing rules, right? When the traffic arrives on the gateway on this particular port, how are you going to uh, configure uh, where to send the traffic next? So that's uh, virtual service uh, resources is for. So we're going to um, deploy both of these. Um, so this is an interesting diagram uh, I borrowed uh, from Route to Cloud. So it essentially highlights what I was just describing. So the gateway resource configs what URL and port number are listening to, and the virtual service configs where to send the actual traffic, and the destination rule configs like um, some of the um, destination uh, rules apply, such as circuit breaker, uh, outlier detection. So you can configure how your clients reach out to the destination with this uh, destination rule. So the lab two, um, the example we're going to experience is web API recommendation and purchase history. And we're going to expose web API to the Istio ingress gateway. Hopefully my environment is ready now. Um, Ram, do you know if uh, people, or, or Eric, do you know if people have their environments are mostly ready in the room? Um, we need a couple more minutes, Lynn. Okay. Um, and, and can you tell everyone to uh, which lab that they should go to? Yeah, so if you go to uh, lab two, it's still ingress gateway, just skip to that lab. Uh, so just to skip to the first lab, go directly to that lab. Yeah, so click on this one to, yours should be skipped to, and mine is continue because I'm already part of this lab. Len, it's just going slow for some people, so maybe give it another couple minutes. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, one thing I can do is give you guys a quick overview of each of the lab uh, where we're waiting for the environments. Uh, so we talk about lab two, right? Uh, the third lab uh, we're going to do is uh, mesh observability, right? So we're going to add um, services to the mesh incrementally, and we're going to check out the benefits what Istio brings by adding services to the mesh. Uh, you will gain visibilities of interactions of, among your services immediately without you really needing to do anything. Um, so in order to add services to the mesh, uh, we're going to teach you, you know, what are the things we want you to check out for, uh, making sure you name your service port, uh, make sure you're not using UID 1337, make sure your pods have a service associated, make sure you label your deployments with app and version. This is for telemetry purpose, so we know this metrics is for this app and version. Uh, in this lab, 
we're going to teach you to use uh, the automatic injector um, along with the IP table. Uh, it's still in need to set up the IP tables. So it does require you to have net admin and let raw privilege. So if you don't have those privileges in your actual Kubernetes environment, we do recommend you to check out Istio CNI. So that's the third lab to gradually add services to the mesh. So with that, I'm going to get started on lab two. So you should, if you click on that skip button, you should get something like this. Congratulations. You have installed Istio successfully. Uh, let me see where I can move this guy. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is, um, please, uh, just follow along with me, uh, is, you know, go into the directory where we have the contents for this lab. And we're going to create a namespace called Istio in action. And we're going to deploy the couple of services I was mentioning to you, web API recommendation, purchase history version one, and the sleep uh, into Istio in action. So if you get a pause on this namespace, you can see everything reaches running, so it's all good. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, config inbound traffic, right? Because these services hey, Glenn, are can, in. Can you zoom in a couple of times? Okay, thanks. It's pretty small on our side. Is it good? Better? Um, a little bit more. A little bit more? Okay, better. A little bit more. Wow, I feel like it's really big on my side. Okay, yeah, is it that's, better? That's much better. Okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> that's very helpful. Okay, so um, you have these services deployed, right? But how do you reach it out from outside of your Kubernetes cluster? Um, so we're going to configure inbound traffic for that. So the first thing we're going to do is check out the services we have in the Istio system. Remember we, during the lab one, we installed Istio, which comes with Istio Ingress Gateway. And because we installed the demo profile, so it also actually installed almost everything from the Istio project, including the add-ons such as tracing, uh, zipping, Kayali. So everything is available to us. And Istio Ingress Gateway, you have an uh, external IP associated with that, right? And uh, we're exporting out that as a gateway IP. Um, we also set up two port number, one for 80, one for 443. Now we're going to look at the gateway resource. Remember we talk about gateway resource is to specify your host and your port number um, to open up uh, the gateway is listening onto. Um, and then we're going to review the virtual service resource for the web API, which are binded to the gateway that we just reviewed, the web API gateway. So this is how you bind a virtual service to your gateway. And also the host name also matches the host name we specified in our gateway resource. And remember, we talk about virtual services really are uh, route rules, right? So this configs the routes for HTTP traffic to the actual web API service in Istio in action namespace on port 8080. So now the question is, why is port 8080, right? So if you look at the get service, uh, you can see the service is listening on port 8080, which is why we forward traffic to 8080 here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is um, deploy these uh, resources, uh, virtual service and uh, gateway resource we just reviewed onto our Kubernetes cluster. And now if I occur um, the Istio in action um, host um, the gateway IP and the ingress port, which is 80, you can see I'm actually reaching out to web API through my Istio ingress gateway on port 80, and I'm able to reach out to the service successfully. So that's how you can simply config um, access of your service from outside of the cluster. If you want to do 
dig a little bit deeper, you can check out the proxy config for the routes. And as you can see, uh, these are the routes we will config early for HTTP 80 and it routes to um, the virtual service that we just defined, which routes to the web API service on port 8080. Um, if you want to see individual routes a little bit more detail, right? So you can actually see this is um, the individual routes uh, that routes the traffic to this cluster, by the way, by automatically um, config um, this to connect to the Istio Ingress gateway, you actually gain retries um, two times and uh, retries on 503. So these are something Istio provides for you automatically by just connect to your service to Istio Ingress gateway. So we don't want to expose the service just on AD, right? We actually want to expose it more securely. So in order for us to expose it on uh, 443 on the secure port. The first thing we're going to do is create a secret uh, called Istio in action search. And we're going to use a pre-build uh, key and search from overlap. Um, just create that secret in the Istio in action, Istio system namespace. And now let's take a look at an updated version of the gateway resource we're going to deploy soon. As you can see, we only config 443, not 80 this time, and the same host. And uh, we are configuring um, a simple TLS using the credential we just created. Let's go ahead and apply this uh, gateway resource. Now we're going to call the web API through Istio Ingress gateway using the secure port, which is 443 here. Now, everything works, right? Because we tell Istio to open up that port for us, for the service. I have a question for you. What if I go back to call the same thing on port 80? Do you think it's going to work? Yeah, it's not going to work because in that gateway resource, we only open up port 443. We remove the configuration for port 80, so Istio knows not allowing any traffic on 80. Congratulations, you have exposed the Web API service to Istio Ingress Gateway and securely. Uh, we're going to explore adding services to the mesh in the next lab. So click on this uh, button here to check um, if everything is correct which you can see it is. And uh, it's automatically loading the next challenge for you, uh, which you can click on the stop button. So this is the challenge in lab three. We talk about early to adding services to your mesh. Um, Ron, uh, any feedback from the, the room? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think the room wants you to slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, so maybe like just give everyone maybe three minutes to catch up. Yeah, that sounds good. And then uh, I'll um, give you the go ahead. Yeah, please do. Um, in terms of timing, I know uh, I, I lost track of when we start because I know there's a break coming to you. I don't know if we're taking the break in the room for the lab. Oh, they want us just uh, take a shorter break maybe, but catch up and finish uh, on time. Do you know? Um, let's let's plan on taking a like a five minute break in between. And okay. then the so so this lab, the part two of this lab is also in this room. There's just a break in between. So yeah, we'll, we'll plan on taking a five minute break and then everyone comes back and we'll continue. <laughs> 